God said to Moses, I am. That I am. I am is my name. Yahweh is my name. Jehovah is my name. Now all those title names tells us what God is capable of doing. Your system of sicknesses, hereditary sicknesses, can be perished if you can have this mind right to accept the word of God. Well, I'm so excited that you made time again to tune in to Destiny Line, your popular religious broadcast that brings you good teachings that is able to lift your faith high, to meet the demands of heaven, and to assess all that you need to assess. I'm so excited that we are getting into the second part of this series on faith. Now we're going to see how to manifest the supernatural in our natural environment. Let's get into the service with our spiritual tools in our hands. And let's begin to dig out the truth Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a better clap offering. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and the verse... 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. Father, grant me utterance. Let me teach me clear your speech and understanding. Let the entrance of your word bring light. Transform us. Help us to conform to the very image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I teach your word and preach under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, let faith be impacted. Let lives be transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Last week we began our series on faith. And what I tried to do last week was to help us to understand that for you to perfectly operate in faith, you need to understand the two worlds. You need to understand also the operation of the two worlds. There is this physical world that we see, we can experience and touch, and there is a spiritual world. There is a world where only spirit dwells or live in and there is a world for physical bodies. I would of two worlds they have their limitation just as physical bodies that you have cannot live or dwell in the spiritual realm in the same way we cannot have Spirit beings dwelling with physical beings here on earth. And in both worlds, be it spiritual or physical, there are things. There are things in the spirit world. And there are things in this physical world. The Bible says that for us to walk in faith, we need to understand this scripture we just read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things 
which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That scripture tells us every seeable thing has an expiring date. Can I talk to somebody here? That means that the sickness that has been diagnosed by the doctors has been seen. And if it has been seen, it is temporary. It has an expiring date. Another words, that thing has no legal or spiritual right to live with you permanently. The pain you experience all the troubles you have in this life by the principle of the word of God and spiritual mandate they have no right to be permanent in your life I wish somebody understood what I'm talking about it means that if you think you are going through enough problems or troubles how do you do Something must go. Either you go or the trouble go. But as a child of God, you must survive that thing. And that problem, because it has a sparring date, it must live your life. Hallelujah. Everything you are going through will pass away. I said it will pass away. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything. Why we look not at the things which are seen? So when you are talking about faith, faith says that don't look at the negative things you are seeing. Because aside the negative things you are seeing, there are also things in the realms of the spirit you don't see. And the things in the realms of the spirit which you do not see are permanent. They are eternal. I explained to you last week that the reason why they are eternal is because they have not yet entered into this space of time. Time controls everything here on earth, but time does not control heaven. I repeat myself for free. Time controls everything here on earth. Everything seeable. Everything touchable. Everything you can smell. Everything you can touch. In short, everything you can experience here on earth is being governed by time. In fact, even the earth we live on is governed by time. It's the reason why the Bible said that heavens and the earth shall pass away. There is one thing that does not pass away. And that is the word of God. And I will explain to you why. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So when we talk about faith, Faith is a spiritual walk. A man of faith is a man who works supernaturally. Works in accordance to the dictates and is inspired by the things in the realms of the spirit. Faith is working at a level higher than your five senses. Faith is a spiritual language. 
is a spiritual sense and not the physical senses we have. With our five senses, we relate to this world. But how to relate to the spirit world is by your faith. Somebody say, my faith. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you last week that all our life here on earth as Christians revolves around faith. By grace we are saved through faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We have our righteousness or justified by faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our even our faith faith therefore is very important for every Christian let me show you something real quick from the book of Matthew chapter 14 the verse 28 and Peter answered him and said Lord if it be thou somebody say if it be thou I did not hear you can you give me a little volume, church? If it be thou. He said, Lord, if it be thou. In other words, if it is you, bid word. me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come, down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind by straws, he was afraid and beginning to sing, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. The Bible gives us a scenario that explains to us, uh, explains faith better to us. These people were on the seas and they saw somebody coming. And when they saw this person, they thought it was a ghost. And Jesus said to them, don't kill yourself. It is I. Be not afraid. And Jesus was actually walking on the water. And when he got close to them, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it be done. In other words, if we are not talking or we are not talking to a ghost neither are we looking at a ghost but if it is you Jesus if it is you Jesus then beat me ask me to come to you on the water that simple statement if it be thou is a statement of faith in other words should I say? If it is not a ghost, if it is not a spirit we are looking at, but it is you, Jesus, then ask me to do the impossible. If a ghost asks me to do it, I will fail. If a spirit asks me to come, I will drown. But if it is you, Jesus, if you ask me to come, I am safe. And I will not drown. It was a statement of faith. If it is only you, Jesus, then I can do the impossible. I love the setting of the scripture. Peter answered, if it be thou, if it be thou, bid me come. In other words, if it is you, just, just ask me, come. Peter said, if it is you, ask me, come. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Peter was in the first saying to Jesus, if it is only you, then give me 
a word. If you ask me to come, and if you can give me a word, I know that no matter what is surrounded, has surrounded us, I can come based on your word. That word come is a word of faith. It's a word of faith. Somebody say a word of faith. I did not hear you. A word of faith. Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Let me deal a little bit, a little bit with the substance. Say after me. Now faith, now faith is the substance. Tell somebody, faith, faith. is the substance. What is faith? Turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 The Bible declares But what saith it? The word Somebody said the word The word is in Thy mouth And in thy heart That is what Come on continue That is what the word of faith which we preach. I am driving at a point, so don't lose me. Faith is the substance. The word is in thy mouth and in thine heart which is the word of faith that which preach so faith is the substance and faith is the word which we preach are you getting me so what am I saying? come on talk to me do you understand what I'm talking about faith is the word which word the word of God Faith is the word of God which we preach. What I am preaching to you now is called the word of God. It's also known as the word of faith. The word of faith which we preach. So go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith. Now faith. So if we understand that faith is the word of God. And faith is the word we preach. It will be alright for us to substitute the word faith here with the word of God. Come on, talk to me, church. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So what did I make and I say? Or I should go back again. Faith is the word of God. Faith is the word of God. Faith is the word we preach, and what we preach is the word of God. So faith is the word of God. See after me. Faith is the word of God. Faith is the word of God. Faith is the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith. So if faith is the word of God, then we can substitute faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 with the word of God. So Hebrews chapter 11 could be right this way. Now, the word of God is the substance. Oh, Lord help me here. Now, the word of God is the substance of things you 
hope for. Adia, we need that so. so when Peter said to Jesus, the brother Peter catch me yesterday say, if it is you, say your word, give me a word. Mama asemuno. If it is you, say your word, give me your word. Mama wasemuno. Because your word, if you say wasemuno, is faith. Aye jidi. And your word, na wasemuno, is substance. Aye niya adia mi kuremu. This bowl contains water. Can you see that? So who say this bowl contains water? If I drop my hand into this water, my hand will go under the water. And when I bring my hand up, it's still water. When you jump on water, you will go under the water. Peter knew this. Peter knew that should he jump on the water, he would be drowned. He will go under the water. But he still wanted to do what Jesus was doing. And to be able to do that, he said to Jesus, if it is you walking on the water, then give me the word. And the word is faith. In other words, I need something which can become a substance, which can become a material that can sustain me when I jump on the water. So, when Jesus said, Come. That was all Peter was waiting for. I am looking for a word. Come. When Peter jumped on the water, he was not jumping on the water. He was jumping on the word. Come. He was jumping on the word. Come. This is ice block. Ice block. This is ice block. Ice block. Ice blocks are made out of what? Water. Ice blocks are made out of water. Ice block. So, pretend you don't see this block. Ice block. And all you see, like Peter saw, was water. Peter wanted to jump under water. And as a professional fisherman, he knows that when you jump on water, you sink. But this time, he does not want to sink. He does not want to just even float as a fisherman who knows how to swim. But he wanted to walk on the water just like Jesus. And he knows that nobody has ever done that. Except this time they are seeing Jesus walk on the water. So when Peter said if it is you, Give me your word. In other words, Peter was looking for a word which will become the substance, which will become the dependent of his faith, which will also become the material out of which something could be created. So when Jesus said, come, Peter received that word. He did not think twice. He did not engage his senses. He did not engage common sense. He just jumped on the word, which is the word of faith, which is the substance. And immediately, the word, which is the substance which is faith change this water into a hard 
block. Am I talking to somebody here? My hands go into the water. But my hand cannot go into the blood. In other words, when Peter released his faith, in the word of God, when he released his faith, in the word of God, the word of God, which is faith, became the matter, became the material substance that gave Peter a foundation to walk on. Faith, simple means superimposing over the physical with the realms or with the things in the realms of the spirit. Faith is superimposing on the natural. On, on the natural things with the things in the realms of the spirit. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but we look at the things which we don't see. So, there are things in the natural, there are things in the spiritual. So, faith is superimposing, dominating and controlling the things, T H I N G S, and your ma. Things we see here on earth with T H I N G S, things in the realms of the spirit. And in your ma, it was so. So faith says that. Did you say? I see things in the realms of the spirit. And I see things here. The things I see here, I don't like it. I want to change it. But to be able to change it, I must release my faith to assess things in the realms of the spirit to overshadow, to dominate, to control the things in the natural or the things I see. Well, 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 I know you have been blessed. I told you that we are going to dig out the truth. That is what we know to do. When you join us at the palace, we do nothing else but digging out the truth of the word of God because that is what gives life and that is what makes a man free. If you have been blessed and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you this opportunity to make a decision for Christ. Say after me, please. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I am convinced that I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. Therefore, I ask you for forgiveness. Please, come into my life and be my Lord. I receive you now. Amen. And amen. If you said that prayer, that is all that Christ Jesus was waiting for you to do. And I keep telling you that there is nothing gymnastic about this. It's as simple as that. Salvation is something that God did for us and not anything we do. And I'm happy that He made that decision for Christ. But if you live in Medina and it's environs, may I have the pleasure of inviting you to join us at the palace of the International Palace Church. In Medina, after Red Cove Flats and Upset Ridge Junction, right on your way to Agoba, you will find the palace right there. Join us every Sunday morning from 7 a.m. And with our spiritual tools in our hands, we will keep digging out the truth of the word of God that it has the power, that has the power to transform our lives. God bless you. If you live Far away from Medina, see the numbers on the screen, call the numbers, and you'll be directed to any of our branches to worship with us. God bless you. See you again, same time next week. Shalom. Mm-hmm.